Welcome to this World Art Day. It's my privilege to talk about this notion of art linked to social health and social inclusion. For this, I have in the round table Jonathan Fox, who is the co-creator, co-founder of this uh, playback theater technique that he will present. Uh, I have Alison Phillips, who has this uh, very interesting chair, UNESCO chair, who um, is uh, doing so much things for social inclusion. I will let her introduce herself better than what I'm doing. And, and Taige as an artist, who is an artivist going on the ground in order to make things change with art. Thank you to all the three of you for being here. Uh, maybe, Alison, you can introduce yourself first. Bonjour tout le monde. Uh, my name is Alison Phipps. I am the UNESCO Chair for Refugee Integration through Languages and Arts based at the University of Glasgow. Thank you very much. Jonathan, please. My name is Jonathan Fox. I am the co-founder with my partner, Joe Salas, of Playback Theatre, a story-based applied theatre approach that we started almost 50 years ago now and is practiced in about 75 countries. What we do is we act out the real stories of people in the audience, whatever they are, wherever they are. Um, and we, um, we believe that everyone has a story that's worth telling and worth listening to. I'm also the founder of an approach um, starting uh, that started during the pandemic called the listening hour where people online a small group have the chance just to share stories with each other within a one hour framework thank you very much taige maybe you can introduce yourself and uh, you send me beautiful images maybe this could also be a way for you to even better introduce yourself merci je m'appelle taige ahmed Je suis euh, danseur, chorégraphe, pédagogue, directeur artistique de l'association Namsena et directeur artistique du festival Talunalabo, festival euh, de la danse contemporaine. Je, je développe des projets avec mon association dans les camps de réfugiés pour des conflits euh, ethniques et Aussi, j'utilise l'art euh, comme euh, outil d'insertion des personnes vulnérables, c'est-à-dire les réfugiés en Afrique, en Europe. Et voilà ce que je développe avec l'association. Thank you very much. Um, so maybe uh, we can begin with you, Taige, uh, for you to explain what type of artistic techniques you develop that work better for a specific audience. And for this, I will share some pictures that you have sent us. Merci. Uh, je développe uh, beaucoup plus. Je développe uh, la danse avec uh, avec uh, les réfugiés. Euh, dans les camps pour créer euh, une insertion euh, dans les, les villes qui les accueillent. C'est-à-dire euh, les réfugiés, euh, quand ils arrivent, euh, ils sont accueillis, ils sont accueillis et avec les vivres et tout. Et, et les, les autochtones n'ont pas ces vivres et ça crée des, des conflits entre eux, autochtones et réfugiés déjà. Il faut Euh, que l'art fasse un travail euh, euh, qui leur permettra de, de, de créer le vivre ensemble. Donc, je, je crée avec la danse, euh, euh, en utilisant la danse qui est la danse traditionnelle et en plus euh, la danse des réfugiés et les danses des autochtones pour qu'ils puissent se croiser, s'échanger. Euh, pour euh, créer ce vivre ensemble. Mais avant tout, il euh, y a euh, toute une méthode de travail que j'ai développé avec eux pour qu'ils puissent avoir une confiance et, euh, et prendre cet atelier et travailler ensemble avec les réfugiés. Donc, on arrive à créer des spectacles avec les réfugiés euh, et les autochtones pour qu'ils euh, qu cohabitent ensemble. Et le public qui regarde déjà le travail, c'est un autre impact. Il regarde les réfugiés et il, ça crée des amitiés entre eux. 
Et dans ces cadres aussi en Allemagne, euh, dans les printemps arabes, j'ai développé de, ces projets dans plusieurs villes et avec le théâtre de la ville de Munich et d'autres théâtres de la ville de Düsseldorf et autres pour euh, travailler avec eux, les jeunes réfugiés. Comment euh, ils peuvent transmettre la culture euh, qui est la danse, le, la percu euh, avec les jeunes euh, étudiants des cours des, euh, des jeunes étudiants de, de l'école de danse et du théâtre. Donc, euh, il y avait cet échange qui a aussi beaucoup aidé et ça a créé des liens entre eux. Et aussi, comme je viens du Tchad, c'est un pays qui a eu beaucoup euh, de guerres. Donc, euh, dans les années 79, euh, le Tchad est divisé, euh, Ndjamena, la ville capitale, est divisée euh, entre le quartier nord, quartier sud, musulman et chrétien. Donc, il y a une méfiance. Et avec l'art, j'arrive à créer dans les différentes maisons des quartiers des ateliers de danse euh, et du théâtre et créer un plateau d'échange entre les jeunes pour casser ces barrières, ces barrières religieuses et aussi, euh, et aussi euh, ces barrières euh, euh, ethniques. Donc, euh, voilà un peu ce que je, je fais avec l'art euh, au Tchad, en Europe, en Afrique, un peu partout. La méthodologie que j'ai développée, elle est enseignée aussi un peu partout. Donc, en ce moment, j'interviens un peu dans le cadre du projet de Arla, de, de l'UNESCO, pour euh, pouvoir euh, partager cette méthode un peu partout en Afrique. Beautiful. Thank you very much. And we see uh, those beautiful pictures that you have sent. So you said um, Chad and Europe and regarding your techniques. Um, maybe, uh, Jonathan, you can share also uh, some of the techniques for us to better understand how you are dealing with art uh, when it comes to social, okay. even mental health. We do actually the same thing wherever we are. So I'm not going to be showing you a kind of different different approaches. Uh, this is a village in India, and you see the actors. Um, the actors are acting out um, personal stories shared by different members of the audience. And in the process of one of these playback theater events, the community um, gets to see their own story, their collective story, stories that are of concern to many, many people there. So we go to all kinds of settings um, and we're always doing really the same thing. We're listening to what the people want to tell and we play it back for them. So um, this one um, shows actors in the foreground and they're performing at a school. And this is in New Orleans after the very severe hurricane uh, that um, affected that city in 2005. And playback theater is used um, often for uh, recovery following natural disasters, uh, and also uh, in context of uh, ethnic strife, um, as Taig mentioned, um, where uh, people um, in the rebuilding of civil society um, can once again um, share their stories and listen to each other. So in this performance, uh, these kids, they are very young, but they're actually telling stories which work in indirect ways often, but about um, injuries and getting better and um, how things can work out in the end. And I have just one more uh, photo, and this doesn't show you much, this could be anything. But this is a photo of the listening hour. And um, these are people who um, are each sharing a story and listening to each other's stories. And what's significant is that they're from all over the world and they can, through this medium of story sharing, make contact with each other and find some release from the stress of being isolated and um, all the things that we worried about Uh, during the these COVID times. Um, so uh, those are my um, pictures. And what I will say is that um, 
playback theater, we do not in any way uh, position ourselves as a therapy. Um, it, in, insofar as it's non-scripted, we're in a way recreating the oral tradition where there's no distinction between art and healing. You know, you carve the mask or you do the dance in order to heal, in order to bring the community forth, in order to help solve some kind of problem. Um, and so we, we um, do our theater in public spaces uh, in order to promote social health. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much for these uh, beautiful explanations. Um, Alison, uh, could you explain us what you're doing, um, you know, in this chair for us to have a concrete idea on how you're having art as a social maker? There we go. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, it's been a very hard week and um, doing this in the middle of um, the um, experiences we're having in the UK at the moment where the UK government is taking us out of the refugee convention means that the work we do in the um, the chair for refugee integration through languages and the arts is um, under a great deal of threat as well as um, really has never been um, more um, necessary. Our work is based in Scotland. Scotland um, has the world's first ever refugee integration strategy. And by integration, that means a way in which communities integrate and come to a greater wholeness. This isn't about burdening people with a task of becoming more or less like other people, but actually saying by coming together interculturally and through dialogue, through art making and through sharing our different languages and our freedom of expression, we can come to a greater creativity and knowledge of ourselves. We're we're particularly rooting our work in Article 13, um, obviously the rights to freedom of movement, but also Article 27, the right to freely participate in the cultural life of the community. And within that, um, we do all kinds of different things, very much following on from what Jonathan um, was saying. So I just want to share here um, a practice that I was taught by Annette Rose in Aotearoa, New Zealand, which is the making of the trauma mask. And this is a really powerful practice um, used in the um, Christchurch earthquake, used with former veterans, but also used with people who have had to flee persecution. Um, this is a mask I made myself because there, we cannot understand how to make with others without making with others. So um, this is um, with objects collected from the seashore, from a garden, things that became precious over a period of time, some time to paint and make in the hands of a healer and an artist herself. Again, as Jonathan and Taige were saying, not claiming to be therapists, but to be practices that can be restorative or can take us in to another place. And um, the next one I want to share with you is the practice of gardening. I, I work all over the world and in every place I go where there are refugee communities making their lives anew with the people of the land, the indigenous people or the people who've been there for a while, there is a deep practice of engagement with the earth and with gardening, with horticulture. And that's become really important both as a place of mending and learning and restoring the land um, in this broken earth of ours, but also as a, a almost a, a place where new forms of expression can come, be that theatre or music or dance. Um, but for myself at the moment, that's also been a place for the expression of art. That little um, piece on the side is a sketch of a, a, an ancient poem from Scotland, from the Carmina Gadelica, which has come into a new translation, which is used to hold those who have sought refuge. And I'll just give you a few lines of the new translation of that from the Gaelic that I've done. Each day and each night, I shall not be killed. I shall not be wounded. I shall not be put in a cell. I shall not be gashed. I shall not be torn to pieces. I shall not be raped. I shall not be stripped naked in the square. I shall not be torn apart, nor will all the goodness I carry, the great spirit, the loving earth, the sky, the wave, the sea, the seedling, brother sun or sister moon, leave or forget me. Nor shall the sun burn me, nor shall the fire burn me, nor shall the embers burn me, nor shall the moon bleach me, 
nor shall the river drown me. And I find this such a powerful Indigenous poem. And in the meeting of the Indigenous people who've had to seek refuge and the Indigenous people who have often been forced to seek refuge within the land, these meetings are incredibly powerful, particularly when held in those incantations of the land and brought into multilingual spaces. And so that's the final piece that I wish to share with you, um, a multilingual dance piece danced by the indigenous people of the Dodua rainforest in Ghana. Um, young people who led us in their improvisation of their own understandings of freedom of expression and freedom of movement and what that means. But did this starting in their mother languages, and for us a key practice is always to start in your mother language, regardless of whether the people leading, like myself as a native English speaker, understand or not. It's actually really important for us to decenter dominant, often previously violent practices and allow other people's practices to come to the fore. So this is a tiny bit of that, um, that experience of the work and you'll just hear some of the music. Yes, beautiful. Can you show us just the first uh, slide of your PowerPoint because we couldn't see it. And I think this was very important to also remind us uh, the importance of this UNESCO Chair Refugee Integration through Languages and Arts that the University of Glasgow has. Thank you to all the three of you, maybe uh, to finish these two short um, moments that we spend together because we feel that we are working on the same land. We are cultivating the same idea with art, uh, getting some fruits uh, to really help humanity and human dignity. Uh, maybe one word that you want to give us us, uh, for this World Art Day. One word to conclude. Uh, let's have maybe uh, the artist talk first, uh, Taige. <laughs> un dernier mot, un mot de la fin, Taige. Um, un mot de la fin, merci beaucoup uh, de m'inviter uh, pour uh, ces Zoom. Et uh, je dirais, uh, il faut beaucoup euh, beaucoup de aides aux personnes vulnérables parce que le monde même est déjà vulnérable. Qu'est-ce que, avec euh, ce qu'on pourra comme artiste faire, euh, avoir des moyens et aller euh, plus faire ce travail Et je, je dirais aussi euh, pour le prochain projet que je vais peut-être aller, ça va être peut-être euh, au Congo. À, à, entre Kivu et euh, le Rwanda pour les jeunes filles violées, euh, développer un projet avec les jeunes filles et, et tourner et travailler avec eux, euh, faire une sensibilisation sur ces euh, sur ces phénomènes euh, de la violence. Donc euh, yes. voilà un peu. Merci, Merci. Taïge. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we will discuss about Dr. Mukwege and Congo because this is a place that I'm going very often working with the young uh, woman. Uh, on parlera ensemble de cette population. Um, maybe, uh, Jonathan, one last word before Alison yes, uh, to conclude. Yes. Um, well, you know, it's so hard to find one word. Safe space to flower. Thank you very much. That's a beautiful uh, poetry and beautiful definition of artivism. Alison, to finish, to conclude. We say in the UNESCO chair that it's our task to hold the bowl of tears and expand the space for joy. And joy is a word I come back to a lot at the moment. Rebecca Solnit said, joy does not betray, but it sustains activism. And when you face a politics that aspires to make you fearful, alienated and isolated, Joy is a final initial act of insurrection. So la joie, joy. Thank you. Thank you, all the three of you. Lots of joy, you know. Thank you for getting joy to us and lots of joy and uh, strength uh, for the rest of your wonderful missions. Merci à vous. Merci. Au revoir.